Hey there guys, welcome back to the Modern JavaScript Crash Course, Lesson 19. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the two remaining loops, which are the four in and four off loop. As always guys, if you like the content, show your support by hitting that like button. And if you're new here and like to learn about web development and web design, make sure to hit that subscribe button and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Alright guys, so we'll start this lesson off by looking at the for in loop. So the for in loop is used to iterate over innumerable properties of an object. Now I will go over exactly what that means towards the end of this video, but for now let's just take a look at the syntax of the for in loop and how it works. So again, as I mentioned a second ago, the for in loop is used to iterate through properties of an object. And an object in JavaScript, if you remember back to the lesson on data types, store key value pairs. So we can use the for in loop to loop through those key value pairs. So let's go ahead and first create an object. So we're going to create an object for user. So we're just going to say let assignment operator and then curly braces. Now inside the curly braces is the key value pairs we want to associate with this object. So the first property we're going to create is name. And we're going to say a string of, let's do Harry Potter. Then after name, we'll do one for, uh, let's do age. We can say he's, uh, let's just make him 28. And then we'll also put uh, let's put an email for him. It's a string. We say Potter seven because I think that was his number in the uh, Quidditch World Cup at Hogwarts.com. And then lastly, we can just put uh, another property for house, in which he is uh, Gryffindor. So we've created our object here now, and inside this object, we have four key value pairs. Now, if we want to iterate through all of these key value pairs, we're going to need the for in loop. So the syntax of a for in loop first begins with the for keyword, followed by parentheses. Inside these parentheses, we first insert a variable, which is a custom name. It can be anything you want. So for this example, let's just make it X. Then after the variable, we use the in keyword. Then after the in keyword, we insert the name of our object, which in this case is user. So we just put in here user. Then outside of the parentheses, curly braces, and then inside the curly braces, we just want to log in the X. So as you can see, we're getting all of the property names that's inside the object output into the console. So what's essentially happening here with the for in loop is that it's taking this variable here and looping over our property names inside of the object here. So if we were only after the property names, this is how it would be done with the for in loop. But if we wanted to access the values as well as the property names, we can also achieve this inside of this for loop. So to achieve that, I'm just going to go inside of the console log here and use backticks and then first insert our property names. So we'll do that with X and then I'm just going to use a colon and then we're going to introduce now the values. So to do that, we first need to again use the dollar sign followed by the curly braces. And then what we want to do from here is first access the object. So we say user and then we want to access the property names. So we use the square bracket and insert X. And as you can see now, as well as the property names, we're also looping through the values. So we get both the key value pairs using the for in loop now. So that's how we can use the for in loop to iterate through an object and its key value pairs. Let's now take a look at the for of loop and how it works. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this and come underneath this comment. So the for of loop was introduced in ES6 to be an alternative for the for in loop, which we just looked at. And what we can do with the for of loop is create a loop that loops through iterable data structures, such as things like arrays, strings, maps, or sets. So the syntax of a for of loop is pretty similar to the syntax of a for in loop. So first we have a for keyword, followed by parentheses. Then we have a variable. Now the difference here is instead of a in keyword, we use an off keyword. So we just type it here off. And then we have our iterable which again is going to be our data structure which we'll look at a few examples in just a moment and then after the parentheses we'll have our curly braces and then we have our sorry code statement so again this is the for of loop syntax so let's go ahead now and explore some use cases of for of loop so we'll go above for of loop there and we'll first look at an array so let's say uh, let iterable equal uh, let's put an array of strings so we'll say um, Mario Luigi and we'll just insert in here let's also put Yoshi and then close off that array so what we need to do now is create our variable and I'm going to call this variable let's say let value of iterable 
So for our code statement, we're just going to log in our variable of value. So let's say log in value. So understanding how this is working, the variable we created here, which is value, this variable loops through the properties of our object here and the iterable here is essentially just a data structure we're looping through, which again is just this array we've created. Now another thing we can look at is looping through a string. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these and put in a string let's just say Mario and as you can see now using the for of loop it's looping through each individual character of that string which you can see here in the console so that was an example of the for in and the for of loop in JavaScript you may now be wondering what the difference is between the two so to understand the distinction between the for in and the for of loop it's important to define the difference between innumerable which I mentioned at the start of the video and iterables which we just saw in this example of the for loop now this can be a bit tricky to grasp at first as there is a bit of an overlap of the terms and they're often used interchangeably but understanding the difference between the two is key to understanding the difference and the usage of the for in and the for of loop so let's first take a look at what innumerable means so i'll just get rid of um, the loop and the comment here and i'm just going to recreate that uh, user object um, which had all the uh, key value pairs which related to harry potter so um, let's first say let uh, user equals uh, name is a string for Harry Potter and then we'll just do two more so we'll do age we'll say 28 and then lastly we can do uh, let's do house so we'll say Griffin door be wrapped round in quote marks and let's also just uh, use the for in loop to loop through this object. So we say, uh, let's just say let x in user, and we're just gonna console log x. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the lesson, I spoke about how we use the for in loop here to iterate through all the innumerable properties inside of our object, which are these key value pairs here. Now, when we use a for in loop here to iterate over the innumerable properties of our object, it shows us the property name of our key value pairs, which you can see here in the console. Now, a really important thing to remember here is that when we use a for in loop to loop through our key value pairs here, this is actually done arbitrary, despite it actually appearing in order in the console here. So keeping that in mind, well, let's just dive in a bit deeper into understanding what enumerable actually means here. So to understand what an enumerable property is, we have to look inside of our object here. So all of the property names that you see inside of our object here actually have their own attributes and properties. So if you want to access one of these properties, let's say uh, the properties and the attributes for age, what we need to do is just clear the console here and we'll grab the object property and we'll just type in here object and then say dot get property descriptor. And then what we want to do in here is actually pass two values followed by parentheses. And then what we want to do in here is actually pass in two values first value is going to be the object we want to access which in this case is user so we say user and the second value we insert here is the property we want to access to see its attributes and properties which in this case is age so we'll go after user here and we'll say age so as you can see when we type all this out we get all the attributes and the properties of the age property and one of these attributes as you can see here is enumerable which is set to true now, by default, all the properties created via simple assignment or via property initializer are enumerable. So this by default means all of our properties inside of our object here are automatically enumerable, meaning that every time we use a for in loop, unless we decide manually that we don't want it to be there, in which case we'd set the enumerable attribute to be false, it will always show up in our for in loop. So essentially then, an enumerable property is any property inside of our object when that property's enumerable attribute is set to true, which by default it automatically is we can then use this enumerable attribute inside of any of these properties to determine whether or not that property is accessible when the object's properties are enumerated using the for in loop. So now let's talk about what iterable means. So thinking back to what I said about enumerables being arbitrary, this is where the distinction is evident. An iterable has an internal order to the pieces, whereas an enumerable has distinct parts and is unordered. So to give you guys an analogy, a pile of books is an enumerable, a row of books on a shelf is an iterable, so the key here is order. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of the stuff in the console here and I'll just log in X. If I tried looping over this now using a for of loop, let's see what it gives us. 
you can see it's throwing us an error and it's saying that user is not iterable. Again, the reason we're getting this error is because the properties inside of our object here are not in order and therefore not iterable. Arrays, as we've seen, are iterable because they're indexed and follow an internal order. Hence why we didn't get an error when we use the for of loop for an array. So that's a key distinction here between the two. Iterables are essentially a type of enumerable. They just have that extra quality of being in order. So understanding the difference between the enumerable and iterable here showcases where you should use the for in loop or the for of loop. In this example, you can see the for in is used for objects. You don't want to use the for of loop for objects because simple objects, as you can see here, are not iterable. Whereas something with order, you'd predominantly use the for of loop with things such as arrays, as we've just seen in the use case a moment ago. Now it's also worth noting that it is really dependent on the context of what you're doing. So saying to use only for in for objects and using for of for arrays isn't always the case and shouldn't really be treated as such because you can also use the for in to loop through arrays and there are actually methods to loop through an object using a for of loop, which we won't get into this video, but I just thought it was worth mentioning that. So that's gonna conclude the video guys. If you enjoyed the content, please show your support by hitting the like button. And if you guys are new here and like the content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video.